Hey there, welcome back to Larry's Workbench, where we do projects that are fun and interesting. And today we are working on the Floyd the Droid project. And today we're going to geek out a little bit. We are going to show you how to start up and commission the Raspberry Pi. Now, in previous episodes, we've talked about the hardware that was involved in this little droid. And now we are going to actually start talking about a startup and initialization of the Raspberry Pi processor. Floyd, do you want to say anything before we get going? Absolutely, Larry. Just want to say that this Raspberry Pi transformation was a real glow up. Let's show everyone how the magic happens. That's what we're going to get into. So um, for those of you that don't know, the Raspberry Pi was developed in England about 10 years ago, and it is a small, powerful, single board computer that's perfect for um, driving a robot such as this or driving other types of embedded systems. But the Raspberry Pi does have some steps that have to be undertaken to get it initialized. So right now we've got it on the bot and you can see down here, the lower board is actually the Raspberry Pi. There is a board on top. So this is actually a two board installation and that hardware on top uh, does allow for some increases in functionality. And that's pretty typical in a Pi uh, robot situation, something like that. But today we wanna focus on the lower board. So it's all in place. We do have it powered up, but what we want to do is we want to talk about imaging the SD card. Now, this is hard to see. I've got the, the front arm turret actually taken off right here to make this a little easier to see. I'll bring this up to the camera. It is actually hard to see, but down on the lower part, right down, right down there, uh, right in there, you can see that there's a card. Well, it's hard to see, but anyway, trust me, there's a little teeny tiny SD card in on the bottom side of the Pi. And that card has to be imaged in order for the Pi to get up and running. So I had a Chrome box over here that I was gonna use for that a simple computer and it does have an SD card slot. So I was able to utilize that and it does have a software that allows me to write to the SD card. So the image that had to be written on the card that came from High Wonder. I downloaded that from the internet, unzipped it, and I was able to use a tool on the Chrome box. Now, some of you guys have apples. Some of you guys have uh, Windows machines. That's going to be easier for you. The Chrome box was sort of a hassle, to be honest. And I had to image that card probably about six times before we could get it to work uh, because I had to image it. It didn't work. And then we had to do it again. We had to reformat the card and go back and forth and all this stuff. So it was actually a pretty substantial hassle, but we worked our way through it, got the card imaged, got it into the Pi, plugged in right there. The uh, Pi does have an on-off switch. Well, I mean, the hardware on top has an on-off switch. Flip that switch on, and boom, the Raspberry Pi fired up, and we were in business. I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn the camera around here so you can see what the startup screen for the Pi actually looks like. And that's right here. This temple image is the default wallpaper for the Raspberry Pi. I don't know where it's from. It looks like it's either sunrise or sunset, something like that. But this image is actually coming off the Pi right now. So Floyd's generating that image or the Raspberry Pi is generating that image. And you can change that wallpaper, but I chose to leave the temple image just out of uh, tradition. And also knowing that if I see that image, then I know that the Pi is up and running. So it's just kind of a classic default. I think it's a cool image actually, to be honest. You can see some people standing in, uh, at the temple areas, and that's kind of cool. So the Pi is commissioned, it's up and running, it's producing its desktop image, and that's great. The Raspberry Pi has ports on it that I'm not using. There are two actual uh, HDMI ports right down here, the small ones. And you can also use uh, the USB ports in the back for attaching the mouse and the keyboard to get into this computer and get this up and running. I'm running what's called a headless installation and I will get into that in another video. There's one more thing that had to happen once the Pi is up and running. Go ahead, Floyd. Sounds like you've covered every nook and cranny about setting up the Pi, Larry. That little SD card was like a tiny hero enduring the trials of multiple reimagings. But hey, nothing worth doing comes easy, right? Now, let's keep the magic rolling and show them how this setup turns me from a scrappy bot into a conversation wizard. 
I appreciate that, Floyd. Um, yeah, feel free to chime in uh, whenever you have something to add to the dialogue. I just want to show one more thing. I want to show that the Pi had to be, now that it's up and running, it had to be set up to my local Wi-Fi because we're going to need Wi-Fi when we start doing API calls. So we're going to need that for sure. And that could be done. I actually did that through an app that came with High Wonder, but you can also do that uh, over here is a uh, click, you can click on this Wi-Fi thing and enter in your Wi-Fi information if you've got this graphical user interface up and running. Or you can do that through the command line. And if you're running a Raspberry Pi, you're going to get real used to using the command line uh, because that is old school. Raspberry Pi is running a version of Linux. It's running Raspberry OS, which is a form of Debian, Linux, and of course Linux is based on the old Unix operating system, which has been around for at least 50 years. So it's an old school type of thing. It's an old school file management. It works well and it runs Floyd. So that's your video on how to commission the Raspberry Pi, how to set up the SD card, and then how to attach it to Wi-Fi. Thanks for watching.